10 to about 27. Yeah. <laughs> wow. How do you remember that, man? Wow, that was impressive. And it looks sad. Use that and you need to memorize this as well. Okay. Right, let's draw another quick diagram. You have to derive it physics, maybe. Okay. Now, remember I said this is a basic form. <laughs> now I have to talk faster. This is the basic form, right? What do you think, from what we've been working on the past couple days, is the not basic form? You put more fours in. Yeah, you don't just put more fours in, but what is this thing? It's the area under a parabola, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to have more rectangles or more trapezia, I'm going to have more parabolas, okay? Mm. Right, so, let's have a look at this. Um, this is how I would make one parabola out of this. Okay. Now this is important for you to um, not miss. Okay. Three function values. One, two, three. Two subintervals. One, two. One parabola. Okay. Now if I were doing trapezoidal rule, okay, and I wanted to be more detailed, okay. At this stage, I've got two trapezia. So what would you do? The next step would be we'll just have three, right? So I could make three trapezia out of this, and then I'd go evaluate, and it's fine, okay? But I can't do this with Simpson's rule. Why not? Because I need three values. Because have a look at this. You're like, okay, where do I draw my first parabola? Well, you go one, two, three, and then draw a parabola through there. And then you're like, well, where do I draw my next parabola? You start from this boundary point is overlap, but then you go to one, two, and you're like, ah, I need another value to actually make a parabola, right? So this is one, two, three, four function values, right? Simpson's rule doesn't work. Simpson's rule never works with even numbers of function values. You always need an odd number, okay? So, let's go back. This is our first scenario. One parabola, three function values, okay? What's the next one up? Two parabolas, how many function values? Five. Five. So I'm gonna have uh, one, two, three function values, four, five. Okay, and now if you want to imagine, you could draw, you know, you could draw one parabola there and another one there, you get the idea. Okay, you don't actually need to picture it, you just need to know where the values come from. Okay. Right, now we've got more um, we've got more values, so I'm gonna have to, I'll name this the same way we did it with trapezoidal. So this is A and this is B. Okay. What do I call this? X1, X2, X3. Okay? Right, now let's just think about the first parabola, which is gonna use these three values. Okay. It's going to look exactly the same as this, but with a few different things in here. Okay. So what's it going to look like? I'm going to start with, this is, um, I'll call it area 1, or maybe I should call it parabola 1, actually. Okay. What's it going to be equal to? Now I'm actually going to go back, rather than use b minus a on 2, you see why b minus a on 2 isn't going to cut it when you go from basic form to more complicated form. Why not? Why doesn't b minus a on 2 apply anymore? Exactly right. This x1 is not the midpoint, it's not even close. Okay. Now the, the numerically why it's a problem is because the two corresponds to two subintervals. That's why I halved it, right? So what would I do here? I guess I would divide by four, right? That's what would give me my height. Okay. That's um that's h h. And in this case, h is b minus a on Four. So more generally speaking, I guess you'd say b minus a on n, where n is what? Number of subintervals. Sub okay. So subintervals, function values, um, parallels. You've got to make sure you know exactly which one's which. All right. So therefore, I'm going to I'm going to go back to h because I think it's a, a clearer way to write it. So h on three. Okay. Now, what am I going to have here? First, four in the middle, and then the last. Okay. So the first one is f of a. Okay. Four of the middle. That's in this case f of x1, right? And then one of the last, which is f of x2. There's my first parabola. So when I do my second one, what's going to be the same and what's going to be different? Well, the perpendicular height is the same because the subintervals are all the same width, right? But now when I go f first, four of the middle, and last, the values have changed, right? So here's my first now, x2, right? And then four of the middle one, which is now x3, and then one of the last one, which is x4. Okay, 
Now, just like with trapezoidal rule, because we're, um, our parameters are sitting on top of one another, as it were, we're getting this same um, double up, f of x2. Okay? Um, the fours don't double up, it's um, these ones here. Okay? So if I were to put this whole lot together, okay, what would you end up with? Uh, we would say the entire area is approximately equal to h on 3 is common at the front. Yeah? Uh, the x4 should be Sorry? You wrote f x4, you don't know. Oh, yeah, sorry, thank you. Um, which, by the way, if you want to call it x0 and x4, that's just as, it's just as good because you'll just have so many of these flying around. I think that's actually by convention, that's the way I do it. Anyway, it doesn't matter how you write it, as long as you have to write that good, thank you. Now, if I put this all together, what am I going to get? First one, four of this one, no overlap. Uh, x1, sorry. But these two overlap, so now I have two, right? X2 plus four of this one, which was the middle of the second parabola, and my end. Okay, so you can see it's starting to grow, but it's growing in a predictable way, okay? Now, this was two parabolas. What would happen if I had three? Now, before I write it down, um, sometimes you'll see people call this rather than um, Rather than say f of b and f of x3 and so on, it gets really tired so because you're writing f of this over and over and over again. So what we might do is call this, you know, instead of x1, x2, x3, I guess what would correspond to that is y2, y1, y2, y3. Okay? So that's why this is what I was thinking of before. That makes this y0 and this y4. Okay? So what if I had more values along the end? Okay, what if I had three parabolas? What would be on my last value? If I had three parabolas, what would be my last value? Six. Be six, right? I mean, just imagine if I actually had a larger area. You'd go y5, y6, and that's enough to draw my third parabola, right? Okay, so what would happen? I'm running out of space, so I'll just go here. Okay, the area, it's always going to have h on three at the front, okay? Always. But that h is now going to be, you know, thinner or whatever. Okay. What's going to happen here? We're going to have one of the first. Sorry, that's a little. Okay. How many am I going to have in the next one? It's the middle of one of the parabolas, so it's going to be four, right? Now, the next one is the end of one parabola and the beginning of the next one. That's why I've got two. Okay, two by two. And then it alternates, because this is another middle of a parabola, right? And this will be an end. And this will be a middle and down at the end. Okay? Now, in practice, you're really not going to have to do more function values than that because, like, if we added a fourth parabola, you're not demonstrating any more skill. You're just doing a long <laughs> question, right? Um, so, for that reason, you know, this is all you really need to know. However, because there's this pattern here, which ones are the fours? Which ones are the fours? Tell me. It's the odd ones, right? One, three, Five, okay? So some formulas will say you've got the first one, you've got four times all of the odd values, right? And then the other ones are even. How many do you have of the evens? You have two. And then you have your last one, okay? So you'll sometimes see that written. It is kind of dangerous, but because, you know, if you start at 1 instead of 0, then your odds and evens are exactly backwards, right? So people confuse that, right? So I, we ran out of time, but I'll show you how to do a few examples on how I handle that. But that'll have to wait till tomorrow. Is that wrong for the weekend? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.